Hello, and welcome to the AMSYS Training Podcasts. My name is Russ, and today I will be taking you through the third and final episode of this series about Time Machine in 10.8. In the first episode, Hugo looked at Time Machine configuration and managing Time Machine backups. Pete then took us through how to recover data in the second episode. So in his third podcast, we will be looking at some advanced features, such as how to encrypt your backups, how to manually modify the exclusion list, how to prevent new disks being offered automatically for backup, and an advanced way to change the schedule times for the backups. Since this is the final episode in this podcast series, I've decided to give you a couple of bonus treats and also cover some other features I think you will find useful. So we'll end this series podcast with some extra features. How to toggle local snapshots on and off, how to set up a size limit for Time Machine backup volumes, and lastly, we will look at how to delete Time Machine backups via the command line. A nice addition to Time Machine in 10.7 and 10.8 is the ability to encrypt your backup drive to increase the security of your backups. When you connect up an external hard drive to your Mac, it will automatically ask you if you want to use it to backup with Time Machine. All you need to do is to check the Encrypt Backup Disk checkbox and then select Use as Backup Disk. You'll then be asked to enter a secure backup password and enter in a password hint to help you remember this password should you forget it. Please note, there is no way to recover the data if you forget this password. Click on the Encrypt Disk button when you are ready to start the encryption process. Episode 1 showed you how to manually set up Time Machine using the Preference pane. You can therefore also encrypt your backups here by checking Encrypt Backups when selecting the backup drive you want to use for backups. Then click Use Disk and again enter a secure backup password and enter in a password hint to help you remember this password should you forget it. Click on the Encrypt Disk button to start the encryption process. If you simply want to add encryption to an existing Time Machine backup, all you need to do in Time Machine Preferences is reselect your backup drive after clicking the Select Disk button and tick Encrypt Backups. Supply again a password and a password hint when requested. Hugo showed you in Episode 1 how to exclude certain files and folders from your Time Machine backups using the Time Machine Preference pane. You can also configure exclusions using the command line, which could be useful to system administrators who require a remote way to configure Time Machine. If you have not used the command line before, be very careful when entering commands into the terminal. Unlike the finder, the command line is not forgiving with regards to typos and mistakes. Open the terminal application located in slash applications slash utilities and enter sudo space tmutil space add exclusion space and then the path to the file or folder you wish to exclude. For example, to exclude my downloads folder from Time Machine Backups, I would enter sudo space tmutil space add exclusion space tilde slash downloads. Remember, anytime you use the sudo command, you will be asked to authenticate as an admin to make this change. To verify that the exclusion has occurred, you can use the following command. sudo space tmutil space is excluded, then the path to the file or folder in question. To remove the exclusion, the command would be sudo space tmutil space remove exclusion space and then the file path to the file or folder. The tmutil 
space add exclusion command excludes items in a slightly different way to using a plist file. This command is what we like to call sticky. This means that the item you exclude remains in the Time Machine exclusion list even if you move the file or folder. This behavior does not occur when you exclude items from the Time Machine preference pane. The reason for this is because TMUtil adds the exclusion to the metadata of the item excluded instead of modifying a plist file. This means that the exclusion property permanently stays with the physical file. To view an item's exclusion, navigate to the item's parent directory, then enter the command ls space minus l at. You can unstick the exclusion by using the above add exclusion command with the minus p flag added. This exclusion will still not show up in Time Machine preferences, but will be added to the slash library slash preferences slash com.apple.timemachine.plist file along with traditional exclusions. If you wish to see all the files that have been excluded using this metadata technique, you can use the following command sudo space mdfind space quotation mark com underscore apple underscore backup underscore exclude item space equals space apostrophe com dot apple dot backup d apostrophe quotation mark the default exclusions applied by Time Machine, which were discussed in episode one, are stored inside a plist file called stdexclusions.plist. This is located within the backupd.bundle inside slash system slash library slash core services. These default exclusions do not appear in Time Machine Preferences window. To see a list of these exclusions, enter the following two commands. cd space slash system slash library slash course services slash backup d dot bundle slash contents slash resources then followed by the second command of less space STD exclusions dot plist. You can see that there is a fair amount of files and folders that are excluded here by default. As great as Time Machine is, you may regularly connect additional hard drives to a Mac that does not need Time Machine configured. It can be rather frustrating to keep dismissing the dialog window that appears every time you connect an additional drive asking you if you would like to use this drive for backups. A plist file can be easily modified to remove this pop-up window. Simply enter the following command in terminal. Defaults space write space com.apple.timemachine space do not offer new disks for backup space minus ball space yes your users tilde slash library slash preferences slash com dot apple dot time machine dot p list will be correctly updated to never give you this pop up whenever you connect an additional hard drive. As discussed in episode one of this series, Time Machine's default schedule is every hour and this cannot be changed within the GUI. Using the command line, you can manually adjust the Time Machine backup schedule. To do this, you need to specify the schedule interval in seconds. The default hourly schedule is therefore 3,600 seconds. This is 60 seconds multiplied by 60 minutes. If you wanted to wait two hours between backups, the number would therefore be 7,200 seconds. So to set this two hour schedule, the command would be sudo 
space defaults space write space slash system slash library slash launch demons slash com dot apple dot backup d dash auto space start interval space dash int space 7200 a great free app is also available to download to allow you to modify the schedule using an alternative system preference pane. Time Machine Scheduler disables the automatic backup function of Time Machine and installs its own background process for Time Machine. Just as with the default rights commands, you can adjust the backup interval but you can also skip backups between scheduled times which is very handy. Once you have installed the app you can open its own system preference pane. Click install to disable the Apple time machine preferences and install the additional scheduler. You can now tweak your backups without having to use the command line. I've set the backups to every three hours and to skip backing up between 10 a.m. and 11 a.m. Episode 1 explained that local snapshots are stored within a hidden folder called dot mobile backups. If you decide you do not want local snapshots and want to recover the hard disk space, you can easily disable local snapshots in the terminal by using the following command sudo space tmutil space disable local. Just use sudo space tmutil space enable local to re-enable local snapshots. If you have local snapshots enabled and you wish to manually create a new local time machine snapshot, you can enter sudo space tmutil space snapshot. The local snapshot preference is viewable in slash library slash preferences slash com dot apple dot time machine dot p list. It is worth noting that if you turn off time machine and then turn it back on, local snapshots will be turned back on for portable computers if currently disabled you must execute the disable local command again to disable local snapshots. As well as disabling local snapshots to delete them, you can turn Time Machine off, which will also delete all existing snapshots. Note that this may take a while to delete. Time Machine, by default, will use all the available disk space on your backup drive. The good news is that you can set up a maximum limit that Time Machine can use. All you need to do is specify in megabytes the maximum space limit. You can do this by multiplying your gigabyte preference by 1024 bytes. For example, if I wanted the maximum backup space to be 100 gigabytes, I would multiply 100 by 1024 which equals 102,400. I can then enter this terminal command defaults space write space slash library slash preferences slash com dot apple dot time machine space max size space 102400. This preference can be viewed within the slash library slash preferences slash com dot apple dot time machine dot plist file. To remove the limit use the following command defaults space delete space slash library slash preferences slash com dot apple dot time machine space max size. The default way to delete backups is to use the action menu within the Time Machine interface. However, sometimes this may fail, for example if you haven't the correct permissions. You may even receive an error message such as 
the operation can't be completed because backup items can't be modified. Luckily, the command line can come to your rescue once more. Enter in terminal sudo space slash system slash library slash extensions slash tmsafetynet dot kext slash helpers slash bypass space rm space dash rfv space then the path to the required backup. Terminal will now display a list of the files as they are deleted. Obviously the larger the backup the longer this will take. So perhaps perform this during lunchtime or overnight. Well that is the end of our Time Machine podcast series. We hope you have enjoyed the series and keep an eye out for our next podcast. On behalf of all here at AMSIS, thank you for watching.